In 2007, after five seasons and 73 episodes, Pimp My Ride was canceled. Soon after, MTV stopped airing reruns of the show on its main network, and Pimp My Ride was soon relegated to MTV2, where it barely received any airtime. And by 2009, the Pimp My Ride brand was all but dead in the United States. So what better time to release Pimp My Ride Street Racing? MTV's final attempt at milking the franchise for what little worth it had left. Was this a solid arcade racer or a soulless cash grab like the Pimp My Ride game before it? Let's check it out. Honestly, until I made my MTV Video Games episode last year, I had no idea that this game even existed. By the time Pimp My Ride Street Racing released in 2009, I had traded away my PS2 Slim for the cheapest Xbox 360 on the market at the time, the good old Xbox 360 Arcade Edition. So I was fortunate enough to be playing racing titles like Midnight Club Los Angeles, Burnout Paradise, and Project Gotham Racing 4. But the PS2 was still hanging on for dear life during that era. People often forget that the last game to be officially released on the PS2 was Pro Revolution Soccer 2014, which is just insane to think about. But there were tons of budget titles and half-baked ports of next-generation games being dumped on this system during the tail end of its life. And that's where Pimp My Ride Street Racing comes in. Pimp My Ride Street Racing was developed by Virtuous, a company that nowadays is mostly known for assisting other developers with ports and remasters, but started out by developing a number of handheld driving games. It seems like people have pretty good memories of these titles, but nostalgia is one hell of a drug, because these games were heavily criticized by game reviewers upon release. So it wasn't really easy for me to go into this game with high expectations, especially when I found out that Pimp My Ride Street Racing debuted at the low price of $19.99. I know that Blockbuster was on its way out by 2009, but I'm genuinely curious if people rented this game for half the price of its retail cost. Also, interestingly enough, there aren't any professional reviews of this game online. Come on, how were game reviewers too busy to give this title a chance? What game could have possibly overshadowed the newest, hottest entry in the Pit My Ride franchise? Oh. Who needs the opinion of some professional game reviewer anyway? Let's check out some of the finest user reviews the internet has to offer. Great game if you are bored. Yo yo kid, you wanna make a totally poppin' ride. You in luck my dude, this game is you. Ride a car, pimp a car, ride a pimp car, the options are endless. This game is poppin', pick it up at your local game stop. Good. <laughs> well my confidence is certainly boosted. Anyway, Pit My Ride Street Racing starts out sort of promising with the game's own variation on the TV show's theme song, featuring a bunch of different vehicles from the game. But something becomes immediately clear. Much like the 2006 Pit My Ride game, there aren't any licensed vehicles here. And honestly, with the price of $19.99, you really can't expect the game to have actual real-world cars. But I'm guessing that a few people were fooled by the front cover of this game with its off-brand Nissan 350Z and weird-looking Cadillac Fleetwood knockoff. But after that intro video, you enter your name, which is limited to 10 characters by the way, and you're now free to explore the menu. But there's, uh, not really much to explore here. We've got Championship Mode, which is basically a career mode, Quick Race, which is just a bunch of circuit races, but you're forced to use a pre-selected car instead of your own personal vehicle, Pimp Mode, which is the customization menu for your ride, Hall of Shine, which is a trophy shelf where you can show off all of your pimp trophies to your homies, and Showcase, where you can spin your car around and just look at it. You know, when I see a car like this, first thing I do is I say, would you look at this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my gosh, the just car, look at the it. The car is not perfect. Just look at it. <laughs> just look at it. And you might be able to show off your pimp trophies to your homies, but you sure can't play with them. That's right, there's no multiplayer mode in this game. Talk about dropping the ball. A racing game with no split screen mode? But the issues don't stop there. Pit My Ride Street Racing also doesn't have Exhibit or anyone from either of the shops on Pit My Ride. Now, the exclusion of Exhibit, that's sort of understandable because he stepped away from the show on his own terms and never really had a great relationship with MTV to begin with. So I'm sure that even if they had offered to put him in this game, he probably would have declined. And of course, West Coast Customs cut ties with MTV after season three of the show, and that's where Galpin Autosports stepped in. So couldn't they have just like, I don't know, slapped the gas logo into the menu screen or something? I mean, aside from these weird driver characters who don't even move their bodies to steer the car, there aren't even any people in this game. I'm sorry, I, I just can't get over the fact that Exhibit isn't in this game. But don't worry, I've got a fix for that. So you wanna be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You gotta hit us up to get a pimped out ride. You got to pimp my ride.
Now that's a car that Exhibit would be proud to drive. In championship mode, every series has three circuit races and one special event. You have three different series to choose from at the start. And, uh... I know that this game released over a decade ago, but whoever came up with these series names was seriously out of touch, even by 2009 standards. But that format represents the entirety of championship mode. Three circuit races with three laps, followed by one unlockable special mode at the end of every series. In the circuit races, there are also three optional challenges to keep you busy, including a time challenge, a Skrilla coin challenge, and a no damage challenge. But even with those optional challenges, these circuit races get old so quick. Maybe I'm spoiled by the fact that I played the sh** out of Need for Speed and Midnight Club, but this game just feels so bare bones to me. And the unlockable special modes aren't much better. There's a 3 lap elimination mode, a time trial mode, time attack, no damage, and road pimp. None of these special modes are anything to write home about, except for maybe road pimp, which sort of feels like a subpar imitation of the burnout games. Now, as for the driving itself, it's pretty mediocre. The handling is very loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey, baby. Loosey-goosey. Not to mention there are these jump ramps placed all over the courses, but using one of these is like playing Russian roulette, because upon landing your jump, you might spin out completely or you'll be perfectly fine. There's no consistency at all. But after a while, I actually got kind of used to the wonky controls, and I was Tokyo drifting around corners in no time. As far as the car customization goes, it's not too bad. You can use all of the Skrilla you've earned to change the paint, add some vinyl, change the rims, swap the entire front or rear end of the car, and add some swagger. Wait a minute, I thought this game was rated E for everyone. But the customization aspect of the game is easily the best part about it. Honestly, I didn't expect to like this game more than the 2006 Pimp My Ride game, but the bar wasn't exactly set very high. The 2006 Pimp My Ride was $50 when it came out, and just felt so underwhelming compared to other racing games. Whereas this $20 budget arcade racer, even with its quirks, is actually worth checking out if you find it at the bottom of a bargain bin at your local flea market. Oh, and there was also a Nintendo DS version of this game, but we'll be checking out that gem on a different episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.